From the theater to your ears, this is Cinema Sync, bringing you direct thoughts fresh from the end credits. So, spoiler warning in advance. Alrighty, so Dean, what did you think of Gladiator Two? Fuck this movie. Fuck it, no, right? I'm in just. The... <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, honestly. No, I'm just kidding. I give it like a four out of five. Oh, that's lower than I gave it, but I didn't give it a high score. Because the the thing is, is that when the trailer originally came out, I felt that this is not a movie that needs to be told. It's going to be <laughs> just the first Gladiator all over again. And it was. And the was. only saving grace I felt was Denzel Washington's plotline. Because it's like, we can't just remake Gladiator. Well, what if we cut in like a Game of Thrones style a grasp for power so to speak and that was the best part of the whole movie every time i cut away from denzel i didn't care I'm like <laughs> what, whatever like all this plot line that lucius is actually like you know the true heir to the throne i don't i don't care let's let's go back to i can t i can watch denzel just say the word power for six power. straight hours <laughs> and i'd be completely and i was fully entertained that way Caesar ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess the whole thing with the trailers, I didn't see much, but when you see Denzel, it's like, is he just playing Denzel in Roman times? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, kind of, but it is it's it is the best part of the movie. <laughs> My buddy Carlos, um, shout out again to Carlos. Any more shout outs, you're going to have to start paying me. Um, his sentiments were yours exactly. He was like, I wish Denzel was the main character somehow like it was just his story and not you know a retelling of russell crowe's gladiator story which is yeah. get you know he gets um dicked over his wife is killed he's got a chip on his shoulder for vengeance yep. sold into slavery becomes a gladiator fights his way to the heart of the people and <laughs> topples you know everybody in his way yep um, spoiler alert, he lives in the end, though. He does not die. Which, I, it's, I mean, at least there's that. You know, he's he's not dead at the end. <laughs> do you think for Gladiator 3, they're just going to do Russell Crowe in it, just like how he was in Superman? He just keeps Wait. popping up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> as as uh, Jor-El, as Superman's yeah. dad. <laughs> No, they're going to turn Russell Crowe. His character is going to become Kratos, and he's actually going to become the God of War. <laughs> you know, honestly, but I that's would watch that's the, Greek. I, would watch so I guess the they have to make it. Movie. They have to make it Roman somehow, though. I guess who is Mars? I think that's the Roman version, yes. not mm -hmm. not Ares. Um, yeah, I I would hover this around the six. I think I told right after the movie, I was like, it's maybe almost seven, but I'm not giving it seven. Yeah. Um, yeah. My biggest I mean, like, gripe was, is the same as it was yours. Good. Is, like it's I wasn't, a, yeah. yeah, I wasn't like bored at any point of it. It was entertaining throughout the whole, the whole movie. But it there were certain stretches of segments where I really didn't care, and I'd rather go back to like a different character completely. Yeah, some of it was a bit melodrama. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not familiar with Paul Mezcal, who is the star of the movie. Um, I think this is the biggest thing he's done, I think, in his career to date. I think he's been in some TV, but I didn't really look him up. Um, I think he has moments here where they give him some good things to do, but I don't think he's really flexing a whole lot of um, his ability here, I'm guessing. I'm guessing he's capable of more than he's showing in this movie. Um, so he's That's not true. bad. I just don't think they're giving him a lot. And same with Pedro Pascal. We know what <laughs> Pedro can do. I and Googled I don't think now. he has a lot to do it all in this as far as a range of, of acting and character I, I i'm gonna get hate for this but i i think pedro's a little overrated i like him a lot and you know after the mandalorian you know he got a huge increase in you know leading roles and i do enjoy seeing him but it's kind of it's just like he's really good at what he does it's just i'm getting tired of him just playing pedro pascal his role as the general 
was kind of nice and it was like i i wish i either give him full supporting or reduce his time as uh like not rather make it increase his role as a main character or reduce his supporting role to like cameo and that's it because his whole plot line at least maybe that's where my gripe is is just his plot line was i didn't care he he starts off to being like oh he's the bad general that we're gonna want to kill and then you realize over the course of the movie spoilers of course um he's actually one of the good guys and he's trying to topple the the corrupt government as well as like the whole other resistance that's slowly forming and it's just like by the time you learn this he's only got another like 20 minutes of life left before you know they eventually you know for the tables turn and the protag the antagonists start to you know win the the battle so to speak i, mean, I don't know yeah i might cut that whole thing out but <laughs> pedro pascal's I mean, his intro, the opening scene where it's like the attack on, uh, New, how do you pronounce it, Numibia? Mm -hmm. um, he, it's, he seems to have this indifference or kind of like, I don't want to be here attitude. Um, yeah. And I, at first you don't know if it's just, if it's just, I'm better than this and like, like yeah, oh, we're going to crush these arrogance. people, I don't need to be here. Yeah, I but then we... I took it as arrogance at first. But then there's that shot after the battle on the beach where they're burning all the bodies and all the, the people they've conquered are like wailing for the dead. And he's, he has this kind of stone face, but it's also like it kind of more, I think that starts to say, I don't want to be doing this. Um, and mm -hmm. then at that point is kind of driven home later, but her, his scenes with um, Connie, oh, I forget her last name, the actress. Um, yeah, Nielsen, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Connie Nielsen, who was in the first gladiator. I think the only returning person it's from the first correct. movie yep um it felt like melodramatic or just like it felt like very stagey stage written i guess you could say dialogue um i think sorry to kind of hammer home your point where i didn't care and i just don't think it was it, it, that aspect was really done well um I think it was kind of a waste for Pedro to be there. I mean, I personally, I yeah, that's it didn't seem like a much for way. him to to bite on onto. I think that's a much better way of putting it um, than how I said it. it. It it felt like a waste of time. It's just they could have given that to anybody else, and maybe they cast him simply so that we have a sympathetic face with everything that he's done recently. That oh, you know, it's Pedro. He's gonna be. Um, you know, it helps drive that home. But yeah, it just I felt it was a little too little too late by the time specific events happened where it was like the full reveal, like, no, he's on the good guy side. Yeah. And it just felt man. Yeah, he just kind of served as a here's the Commodus character for the gladiator to hate, but you know, it's a it's a bait and switch with Denzel by the yeah. end of the movie. Mm -hmm. Um which I couldn't really see, like I could tell Denzel was like kind of arrogant and he doesn't really reveal his hand till yeah, like after halfway towards the latter part of the movie. But um But at the same the same time though, you kinda knew right from the get go, like, this guy doesn't fuck around. He's he's not gonna be a good guy, and at most he's gonna be an anti hero. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I used those words when I was talking about it like um, my friend, like, did you want him to be an anti-hero or just as selfish and still be the main character? Yeah. Um, which I guess, you know, you go for those movies that, like, I mean, the Penguin is successful and that show was about a terrible person, but yeah, he's the main character. It, so you can, you can still go that way, I guess. There has been a rise of the anti-hero because there have been yeah, more and more movies right. like Deadpool's another one. And it's not always clean cut and dry where... <clears throat> You know, clearly this guy is an anti-hero. Sometimes they do blend that line and it's a little bit more harder to see. And Denzel's definitely, um, you know, he started off as like, you don't know where he stood in terms of like, well, maybe he's just kind of a prick because of what he does. And he's actually a good guy because he kind of has that good guy. Right. That's what I him. mean. He's like mm -hmm. charming. And 
ultimately it's like i forget i maybe this is me forgetting like he snakes his way to power but what was he gonna do with it was he going to just be a a shitty ruler as as well i forget like because he has a chip on his shoulder because he was um I, he was wronged by rome i guess i forget exactly what he says happened to him but he's doing this as vengeance as well like getting getting on top i don't know if just because he was told that he wouldn't like be anything and he would just came up from a lowly position but yeah it's, it's hard to say and i forget um, i just i just might be me forgetting <laughs> Forgetting I think point. it could be too. Unfortunately, we try to do this immediately after watching the movie, but it took us a couple days to get here. But we're still we're still beating ninety nine percent of the rest of the population because <laughs> we both got treated to an early screening. So it was yeah. nice to be able to get this out on release day or even before it's supposed to come out. Um, screw the embargoes. No, I don't know. I, there's pro- I, those are probably gone. Oh, it's already out in england so it's like yeah no embargoes and um, you can, it's out today too especially so i know we're both giving this middle of the roadish scores i mean i did the the action scenes for the most part i mean if you like what you see in the first gladiator there's a lot more good set pieces i'd say yeah um i love the the way that they transform the coliseum to different things because obviously yes. that's not historically accurate that they filled it with water. Because I would be more interested in the infrastructure on how to fill. Wait, I thought that, that was. I thought, I thought that's why they did it. Did they? Yeah, they that's sworn... a. That's at least from my understanding. Before coming into this movie, I heard that like that was a thing they were supposed to be able to do was do like mini naval battles. I don't know if they actually no. fought. I don't know if yeah. they actually had battles or if they're just recreations for like theater effect but maybe they did actually fight i don't know that part apparently romans once filled the coliseum with water and staged naval battles yeah staged so i don't know if that's like they actually fought like in the movie or if they're just like it's a theater performance or you know i don't know I mean, I felt it was kind of like wrestling, you know. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, it's a performance, but at the end of the day, it's it's really some for the, the entertainment. Some of you may die. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I really thought that was like historically inaccurate, but that's really cool that they actually did something yeah. like that. Yeah, who knows how? The fact that there's water, yes. The rest of it, I don't know. You know, go ahead and look it up, listeners. Um, yeah, of course, and during the naval battle, there's, they brought sharks from, I guess the, are there sharks in the Mediterranean? I don't know where they brought sharks from. Well, I mean, they had rhinos and stuff, so with how big the Roman Empire was, (laughs) I mean, again, the logistics of figuring out how to, it's a pain doing that in modern day with all the equipment required, so I can only imagine how they were able to do that going from, like, some kind of sea all the way up to there yeah the logistics seem like a nightmare that's the movie i want to see (laughs) set during gladiator 2 it's just how did the romans get sharks into the Colosseum with only buckets and no other type of modern machinery christopher nolan directed it's just like oppenheimer but it's just like how do we build a tank for sharks to take us from the atlantic over to italy um oh so the the first like real gladiator battle is with some i I didn't even look these up to see if these were real creatures i assume they baboons i've never seen any kind of ape like that they were like baboons on steroids they look like if steven spielberg were interpreting a skeleton of a baboon from millions of years ago he made his version (laughs) Um, it's, I just have a problem with certain reliance on CGI and like, because you can animate things, that means we will and should do it. And it's like, well, it's not, it's it's not always going to turn out great. Even with like, you know, I'm sure this movie had a massive budget. The sharks didn't look good either. I mean, all considering it's like, uh, like the special effects I feel were kind of in the same vein of like Game of Thrones where... Um, there's so much special effects in this movie, you don't actually recognize it. 
And yeah, the there's, only a, times, there's a lot of soundstage going on. Yeah, there's the only times you notice it is when it's the blatantly obvious, like the monkey, the ape, whatever right. the, the thing it was. The sharks didn't look good either. Um, the de aging I felt for Connie Nielsen, either they de aged her so well that I didn't notice, or that's just the woman never aged to begin with since Gladiator won. I saw her in person and she, I mean, she looks good. I don't think they had to do much, maybe just actual makeup um, to help de age. So, yeah. But then the rest of the the set pieces, I don't know how they were able to shoot it if some of them were practical. Obviously, CGI has to be stepped in, and I'm sure like maybe 30% of the set existed, and then they just did CGI to just like yeah. matte painting style, kind of just do set extensions that way. But you couldn't tell. It I'd imagine cool. that's it. Yeah, and you can't you can't tell the seams there, right? Yeah. So at least, you know, hats off to them for that, because when it comes to putting an imaginary creature on screen, they can't do it for the life of them. But they do know how to do like set dressing really well, at least. I do have to say there is a practical effect that did take me out of the movie. And I was like, I can't believe they held up on a close up of this. Did they actually break the dude's arm in the beginning? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> which, that's... which one was that? Oh uh, God, I don't remember his name. I know Tim has all the names. Of oh, the oh, of his oh, oh! Um, on the boat on the way there, on the way to Rome. Um, he was in um, wasn't he in Resident Evil? He's he's definitely a like he's got a very unique face. He's a character actor. He, yeah, yeah. He, I think I'm pretty sure he's the guy that gets cut into cubes in Resident. You know, I could be wrong. That's a different uh, guy. Never Peter, mind. Peter Menza. Okay. He was in 300. 300 did, is where I'm thinking of. No, he's he not the that, guy in. Yeah, yep. he's not the guy in Resident Evil. He, he's the messenger. Yeah. He gets kicked yeah. in into mm -hmm. the pit. He was in Spartacus. He was in Jason X. He's um, in the Scorpion King or one of them anyway. Yeah, he's, yeah he, he's one really of those guys great that's actor. Been but in the beginning of the movie, he he's sixty five. Wow, he looks amazing for sixty four. No, no, he's yeah, he's sixty five. Holy crap, he looks great <laughs> for sixty five. But he's also six three, so I got the thing mixed up. Um, but yeah, in the beginning of the movie, he like he's like the king of that um, Namibia. Of yeah, and when Pedro's army ransacks the place, they capture him, and I guess during the battle, he broke his arm. I thought I thought Paul was gonna like set it. He just wrapped it in like a a, a splint essentially, but without setting it. I thought he was gonna like <laughs> gonna yeah. have that painful crack. Uh. He kind of dies unceremoniously too. He gets you know his neck ripped open by a baboon. Creature. He does. That was fucking. That was probably the most brutal baboon death out of that whole <laughs> yeah. sequence too. Like man, he, he didn't deserve that. Yeah, no dignity in that death. Um. No, but the actually the effect I'm talking about. So there's two there's two emperors of Rome here. I forget their names exactly. Um, one of them is Joseph Quinn, uh, who we all know as Eddie from Stranger Things. Um, he's blowing up, I guess recently after he that is. after that was massively popular for him and he's his career really took off after that came out i think i'm i'm actually really glad the trailers made him seem like he was gonna be a little more unhinged in the, like a bad way and i appreciate that um i appreciate that that wasn't the case and he was actually a lot more level-headed than the trailers made him seem to be yeah, I guess did they probably just use every moment of him like kind of freaking out that did exist in the movie? <laughs> yeah, and I I noticed I didn't see the trailer. especially you didn't. No. Um, I sent you a screenshot because I noticed in the because I'd seen the trailer several times because they played it in front of every single movie for the last month and a half. Um, there's a there's a specific sequence toward the end especially where you see Denzel speaking before like the council or all the different senators and he's holding a head of a fallen major character that's what i was trying to get to yeah the um yeah that didn't look good um 
of all things practical too they they could have that, that's one of the easiest things i felt they could have done and it just did not look the likeness was not there no but no, it um, wasn't in the trailer they cut out that the head that he's holding it's just like from waist up but in the actual shot itself it you see the full reveal that he's holding the guy's head to prove a point which I oh so you see you see denzel holding a head clearly yeah. in the trailer no okay. you don't so they th- cut that they cut the head part oh, 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 oh and sorry i thought you like, meant like whose face it was okay because that would have yeah. really changed his kit ca- like what you were expecting from him if you saw him doing that in the trailer yeah. Because that, that line that he says is one of his more impactful lines that he says because it's like his final grasp to like, I'm almost one and I'm finally at the top and I'm just like, you know, his Palpatine moment of just like, I'm now at the top and I'm trying to start what I'm, my vision kind of thing. And um, he's holding the head of someone very specific and the way that the trailer cuts it, it's that same exact shot because it's one of his best lines in the whole movie, but they cut it so that, or they crop it rather, they crop it from his waist up so you can only see that and you don't see that he's actually holding a main character's head. Yeah, the likeness on that head, I I, I was just, I mean, the wide shot is one thing and then he places it on, you know, the pedestal, the uh, whatever in the middle of the room. And they do a close up on it, and I'm just like, this does not look. <laughs> I thought one of these things must be true. A severed heads, just because we know we know that's not an everyday sight for people. Maybe in real life, they do look dramatically different than when they're alive and attached. Or B, um, the actor was like you're not going to superimpose my real head on there or it, I don't want it to look just like me or something because yeah, so something behind the scenes must've happened. Ju- just imagining like that those, they, they, you know, the props came out and said, this is the head. And Ridley's like, great. It looks just like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, come on guys. Um, so yeah, the, it, 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 held on his a shot of that head for so long i was like i couldn't believe it i was like this does not it's taking me out of the movie i'm just distracted by how bad it looks yeah <laughs> it was like it honestly was like a b movie head it really was at that point um it, but that's i mean it's a minor gripe but just it just sticks out so much it's just surprising i'll admit that ridley scott knows how to um pick his actors at least um all of the lines that were delivered were always well done I felt, and he knows how to pick excellent character actors that know how to portray their roles perfectly. You know, the the gripe with Pedro was just, I felt it was below him. And I, he probably grabbed it because, you know, obviously working with Ridley Scott is a huge honor, so to speak. Yeah, but, that's probably um, true. Like, you're going to be, you know, take the opportunity to be in a massive blockbuster sequel. Sure. Yep, exactly. And on all the rest of the actors, I mean, there wasn't anybody where I felt like you don't really belong here or um, they weren't pulling their weight. Yeah, some I could I felt like maybe just this one moment in particular, but maybe other moments felt like there's some footage on the cutting room floor. But spoiler alert, I mean, there's we're just spoiling this movie, but yeah, um, when his mother gets killed, um that it's just glossed over so quickly like he's standing there she takes an arrow to the chest <laughs> with yeah. um if the, the first movie she's the only survving i think one of the senators was in the first movie too but he has yes, that the one up. he gets like killed by one of the soldiers yeah and that same exact sequence too just before yeah it felt very anticlimactic for her dying when she had such a huge role in the first one and even in the second one too she may not have been a like a major character but she was one of the primary ones that drove the third storyline yeah her dying in the way that she did and how fast it was just moved on from was just kind of odd to me and i feel like the her son the main character like he he turned really quickly too from like yelling at her to get out to being like i understand everything and we're cool like <laughs> there's just a lot at least between them like there weren't scenes between them stuff that showed this transition but um 
but um yeah denzel more denzel give me more denzel i mean you can't now but <laughs> to show his rise show um, a prequel that shows him becoming this um i don't know he just i guess he just it's all he does is just have gladiators kind of like the guy in the first movie i, I don't know if I that's so. i guess that's all he does yeah because the uh, i tried watching the first one a few times um leading up to the release of this but i honestly didn't know if i was going to see this in theaters um I got lucky with my local theater had a secret showing and all they said was just like, this is a secret. Um, it's going to be rated R and this is going to be something new that Hollywood is putting out. And it's like a pre, it could be a pre-screening. It could be something current, but it's going to be something new that Hollywood's releasing. So it wasn't going to be like some indie or some like unknown thing. It was going to be a big movie. So you won't know what it is until the credits start, you know, kind of thing. And, um, I wasn't able to watch it the first one, but I did get like halfway maybe, or like 30 minutes or at least like, you know, maybe a third or almost halfway through each time. And I lost my train of thought for all this. <laughs> <laughs> Comparing it to the first movie. But yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, it was I, I try to at least do the homework and remember like some of the I knew a lot of it wasn't going to matter, but just I don't remember any of Lucian's storyline in advance because i thought the whole time um maximus was still mourning the death of his wife and i don't get where he had time to have a baby with connie nielsen in between all of that i i forgot like i think it's just implied with how much like it's like revealing him to maximus and then like him asking about him making sure Lucius is safe, you know, before he yeah. dies. That Lucius, um, I, I, Lucius is the is the main is the son, like the real name of the main character of yeah, Blood Lucius. Okay, I don't know why I thought Lucian. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's like a retcon or if that's just if it was implied, and I just don't remember that that was the case. Yeah, but, um, that that's one of the things that I've been wanting now, especially re wanting to rewatch the first one because of that. But I guess I, I mean, with this movie, I mean, if you love the first movie for like the spectacle, I mean, I would say if you want to turn your brain off a little bit to some of the writing and logic stuff, um, you'll probably have a good time with this because it is, you know, the sets, the costumes, the you know cinematography for the most part and um uh the fighting i mean it's all it's all pretty cool yeah it was it was really what great floats you. yeah it's it's totally worth seeing um and just any any opportunity to be able to see like denzel absolutely always go for it and he does carry the movie i really felt his yeah. scenes were the most grappling and Every time he's on screen, he definitely steals the camera, and he deserves it because yeah. just his line delivery, everything is always top notch. I also, I mean, the the movie opened with um, you know, just an uh, what do you call it, like an info dump exposition text on the screen. Yeah, like it's been, I think, what sixteen years? I think they said between the movies. Um, and you don't really know, you don't really know what's going to happen after the end of the first movie but somehow these two wacky brothers got into power <laughs> i just be i'm really curious um how that happened and, and where they came from because you know they're not all there for the most part they got some issues but i guess that and they're super like i mean they they work for what is for being these kind of like second i wouldn't say sub maybe sub villains of the movie mm -hmm. other antagonists um because they are kind of unhinged even though joseph quinn's a little more calculated and put together yeah i mean he's um, still very unhinged, like eccentric eccentric not, yeah he was a lot better off than i thought he was going to be originally and i'm glad they <laughs> gave it to his like weird brother instead <laughs> who i i couldn't I couldn't for the life of me remember during the movie where I'd seen him and then I remembered it was the first season of uh, White Lotus on HBO. 
<laughs> that's where he was. Yeah, that was that. He's a he's in the whole first season. Um, I don't think I've seen him anything outside of that until this movie. But he, I mean, he played that part well in the, in Gladiator. As kind of like mentally unstable brother. I think they're twins. It was implied that they're twins, fraternal yeah. twins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gladiator Two. Gladiator Two. Go out and see it. It's in theaters today, eleven twenty-two. So uh, go get that Coliseum popcorn bucket and let us know what you guys think. We hope you enjoyed Cinema Sync. We want to hear your thoughts, so reach us at Screen Refresh on Instagram or email us at screenrefresh at gmail.com and be sure to follow us on YouTube at the Screen Refresh Network to stay up to date on all our shows. Catch the Screen Refresh podcast every first Monday, Rule of Thirds every third Monday, and don't open this podcast every second and fourth.